Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Thursday, August the 6th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength, give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. The stu stupid man cannot know. The fool cannot understand this that though the wicked sprout like grass and all evildoers flourish, they are doomed to destruction forever. But you, O Lord, are on high forever. For behold your enemies, O Lord. For behold, your enemies shall perish. All evildoers shall be scattered. Our Old Testament lesson today is from 1 Samuel chapter 20, beginning in the first verse. Then David fled from Then David fled from Naoth in Ramah, in Ramah and came and said before Jonathan What have I done where is my guilt and what is my sin before your father that he seeks my life And he said to him Far from it you shall not die behold my father does nothing either great or small without disclosing it to me and why should my father hide this from me? It is, it, it is not so. But David vowed again, saying, Your father knows well that I have found favor in your eyes. And he thinks, Do not let Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as the Lord, lies, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, there is but a step between me and death. Then Jonathan said to David, Whatever you say, I will do for you. David said to Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit at table with the king. But let me go, that I may hide myself in the fields till the third day at evening. If your father misses me at all, then say, David earnestly asked leave of me to run to Bethlehem. His city, for there is clearly a yearly sacrifice there for all the clan. If he says, Good, it will be well with your servant, but if he's angry, we know that harm is determined by him. Therefore, deal kindly with your servant, for you have brought your servant into a covenant of the Lord with you. But if there is guilt in one, but if there is guilt in me, kill yourself, for why should you bring me to your father? And Jonathan said, Far be it from you. If I knew that it was determined by my father that no harm should come to you, would I not tell you? Then David said to Jonathan, Who will tell me if your father answers you roughly? And Jonathan said to David, Come, let us go out to the field. So they both went out into the field, and Jonathan said to David, the Lord, the God of Israel, be witness. When I have sounded out my father about this time tomorrow, or the third day, behold, if he is well disposed toward David, shall I not then send disclose it to you? But should it please my father to do you harm, the Lord do so to Jonathan and more also, if I do not disclose it to you and send you away, that you may go in safety. May the Lord be with you as he has been, with my father. 
If I am still alive, show me the steadfast love of the Lord that I may not die. And do not cut off your steadfast love for my house forever. For the Lord cuts off every one of the enemies of David from the face of the earth. And Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord take vengeance on David's enemies. And Jonathan made David swear again by his love for him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. Then Jonathan said to him, Tomorrow is the new moon, and you will be missed, because your seat will be empty. On the third day, go down quickly to the place where you'd hid yourself when the matter was in hand, and remain besides the stone heap. And I will shoot three arrows to the side of it, as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send the young man, saying, Go find the arrows. If I say to the young man, Look, the arrows are on this side of you, take them, then you are to come, for the Lord lives. For as the Lord lives, it is safe for you, and there is no danger. But if I say to the youth, Look, the arrows are beyond you, then go, for the Lord has sent you away. And as for the matter of which you and I have spoken, the Lord is between you and me forever. Our writing this morning is from the Article 4 of the Apology or Defense of the Augsburg Confession. Uh, Article 4 has to do with uh, justification. Christ, in the last chapter of Luke, commands that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name. The gospel convicts all people that they are under sin, that they are subject to eternal wrath and death. It offers, for Christ's sake, forgiveness of sin and justification, which is received through faith. The preaching of repentance, which accuses us, terrifies consciences with a true and grave errors. True and true and grave, great, ugh. true and great. <laughs> Why is that such a tongue twister? Let's try it again. Which terrified consciences with true and grave terrors. In these matters, hearts ought to receive consolation again. This happens if they believe Christ's promise that, for his sake, we have forgiveness of sins. This faith, encouraging and consoling in these fears, receives forgiveness of sins, justifies, and gives life. For this consolation is a new birth and spiritual life. We speak of the kind of faith that is not an idle thought, but that liberates from death and produces a new life in hearts. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. This does not coexist with mortal sin. As long as faith is present, it produces good fruits, as we will explain later. About the conversion of the wicked, or about the way of regeneration, what can be said that is simpler and clearer? Regeneration is received through the word, the word taught, just like the Anabaptists teach at this time. That doesn't make sense. So justification happens through the word, just as Paul says in Romans 1.16. The gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Likewise, he says, faith comes from hearing. Proof can be derived even from this. Even from this, Faith justifies because if justification happens only through the word, and the word is understood only by faith, it follows that faith justifies. Now we join in the... Apostles Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, true King of heaven and earth, you promised to your church that the gates of hell would not prevail against her, and you still cause your word to be preached and your holy sacraments to be administered among us. But ah, O Lord, the sins of your people obscure the majesty of your bride. Your holy vineyard is trampled and for blessed sacrifice stand neglected. Many think themselves strong and despise the life-giving food that you have ordained for your people, for the forgiveness of their sins. Pardon all our arrogance, and do not come to us in wrath to remove the lamp of your word from before our eyes. O Lord, we pray you, visit this vine which you once established for yourself, and renew us with the sun of your mercy, that the water and the water of eternal life. Give us a great hunger for the food of your true body and blood, and let all your faithful people ever be found in the apostles' doctrine, in the fellowship, in the breaking of your bread, and in the prayers. We implore you, O Lord, for our altar, that it may ever be a place where the medicine of eternal life, the forgiveness of our sins, strengthens us in body and soul, that disbelief and impenitence may stay far from all who come there, so that they may not eat and drink to their own judgment. O Eternal High Priest, let the fruit of your Spirit grow in us, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and chastity. Cause us to live in holy conduct toward one another, to the glory of your holy name, here in time and hereafter in eternity. For you live and reign with the Father and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, Paul, your apostle to the Gentiles, proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ while in prison in Rome. In our freedom to worship you rightly, give us burning hearts when we hear Moses and the prophets expounded before us, and open our eyes to the breaking of the bread to you as our Savior and Lord, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also, from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.